Uh, what's up, everybody? Um, I was outside the other day, and I was taking pictures of the moon. And as you can see right here, and the sun was to my back, where I'm walking over right now. And I always wondered, what is making the moon's cycle? Because it cannot be the Earth's shadow. No way, no way, no way. Right here is the sun. Behind me is the moon. Both above my head right now. But yet, the moon's 85%. So how is that possible? How is that the Earth's shadow? Me, personally, I'm not buying it. You know, uh, I've been doing research about Rahu, the black sun, but I've also done research and found Ketu, and there's some interesting stories. Uh, not just stories, this is like, uh, how could I put it? Um, it's been, it's passed down like through the people. Uh, I'm gonna show some pictures so I could be more detail about what I want to speak about. But it's interesting how they say that it's the Earth's shadow, but yet both these objects are above our heads right now, and the Earth below that we are walking on. So. I want you to take a look at this picture right here. So I want to talk about, you know, they say the black sun. The truth is there is a third heavenly body called Rahu, the black sun. If you think this is the shadow of the earth, then what's the new moon? That's interesting. Because if you really think about it, the sun and the moon, no matter where you go in this realm, it's above your head. So it cannot be the earth's shadow. Now, people say, oh, the earth, it's so big and we're so small. Sorry for the noise in the background. that's a great way the way they people come with these you know ways to uh, not accept the fact of being lied to <clears throat> oh we're so small or so big the Sun is so huge 95 million miles away but that's another topic we're gonna get into another picture I think this picture is very interesting. It says 50 lunar eclipses were recorded since the 1500s. Where the sun and the moon were both present at the same time. That's interesting. 50 of them were recorded since the 1500s. And that's the ones that are recorded. And that model is an interesting model it's very interesting how the Antarctic ice ring is upper like a bowl a half of an egg on the top where the luminaries are with the Sun and the moon and then you can see like the vortex in the center where the elements meet pretty interesting pretty interesting I like this picture it says a lot Man, this picture right here I found is real interesting of uh, Rahu and Ketu, the cycles. And there's a, if you, a story behind it. Oh, I forgot the woman's name. Uh, Rahu and Ketu, but she had a different name. I'm going to find out. But anyway, this picture is interesting. It's in, I think, Hindu. But it shows the cycles of each. Now, I really couldn't tell much of 
what the cycles are because I can't read that, but it's interesting because it goes along with the story. And I have a picture of where she's cutting Rahu's head off, man. And uh, yeah, that pic this picture is, is, is uh, pretty crazy looking. Yeah, this is the picture right here. Some sort of like, she got four, four arms with the moon beaming behind her for the female symbolism, the feminine, some sort of a guillotine. Reminds me of the Jizza album. But that backs up this picture of um, Rahu biting the sun. I believe um, they say Rahu eclipses the sun and Ketu eclipses the moon or also gives the moon its cycles. And these stories to me make a lot more sense than the stuff NASA gives you. With the heliocentric model. Which is like Lucifer. Which puts you off balance. As above so below. Separating the balance of the sun and the moon. While they're both being eclipsed. If you look at the Luciferian picture. As a matter of fact. I have one. I'm going to throw it up right here. To show you. How it throws us off balance. As you see. Balfamet has separated balance above our heads, the sun and the moon, and they're both being eclipsed. Just as well as Abraxas. Now, this one doesn't have the sun and the moon separating the balance, but it's been practiced before the Balfinet. So, I wanted to talk about the creator's creation, God, what we call God, Allah, um, and a lot of other names of the creator, the seven heavens, you know, the, the firmament where the luminaries were put. Our perspective shows us we live on a flat plane. Um, no matter if you send a weather balloon up or if you're in an airplane People say they see the curvature, but there's so much footage that proves otherwise. Um, this is a beautiful picture showing, you know, it shows the Antarctic ice ring, <clears throat> excuse me, being the, um, the outer ring, but I personally think it's an infinite realm. Now, what we call the luminaries, the stars... They say are like gas balls. I beg to differ that. I think they're vibrations in the waters above. Um, so I'm going to show some footage in a little bit. This, I pretty much believe, was by the Norse, if I'm not mistaken. It's a view of the flat earth. As you can see, the luminaries above, the center is the Polaris star. It's a little different from other pictures like this one. It show, This reminds me more of the electric universe. And it shows the boat, the sun boat in the ether with the tree in the center or the magnetic mountain, Mount Maru. Or the tree of life, which gives power. Just wanted to jump back to this real fast with Rahu and Ketu. They say she was a demonic, had a demonic snake body. Um, and she cut off the head of her husband. Now, 
I tried to to read other names of their children and stuff, but you know I'm not good with pronouncing all these names and and other um from other you know languages and and you know walks of life. So I'm not gonna really try. But I put this piece right here that describes her real name. Um, which is pretty interesting, man. And there's so many other stories that relate to the sun and the moon and, and the black sun. I thought this is pretty interesting if you read it. So this is just a little quick picture too. I added to it that talks about the moon crescent and the symbol that's also used in Islam too of uh, Ketu. And this picture right here just shows, you know, the, the earth being the center of the universe. Or, not the universe, but, excuse me, the center. The basement of the universe. The foundation of the universe. And the seven original stars, including the sun and the moon. Which aligns with the seven chakras and... The tree of life, which is in the center um, in Asgard. And it shows this huge tree with all these realms. And, you know, it's interesting how it shows the shield at the bottom where our, our flesh goes and our soul rises to the heavens, which is above. Because we are a soul. We don't have a soul. We are a soul. Um, and it shows a snake coming down from the tree. Which my opinion is the energy. The symbolism of the energy most likely. Um, yeah there's a lot of interesting pictures here. Those little women. It looks like there's like a, a goose. Of some sort. There's so many different ways of expressing a tree of life in the center like this one it's a little more of a bare tree but it's interesting netherlands summer faith i can't read that other word that other word some of these words are hard to say midgard in the center which midgard in the middle um I'm trying to read Grim. I can't see that. Grim. I don't know. Sorry. I can't make this larger when I'm recording for some reason. But I love these pictures because they express so much of the tree of life um, in the center of our realm. Just like a, a droplet of water. When you drop it, that's what the center outward reminds me of or an album. So, this is Mount Maru, the magnetic north. It looks like the cross of Jesus. Um, the four rivers that feed our, our realm. That's most likely Mount Maru. There's probably also a vortex there where the four elements meet. Uh, where the water recycles itself. Which also causes our tides, not from the moon. From the magnet magnetic mountain in the center. Also where Polaris has been for millions of years. Since day one, whenever that was. That star don't move. It's always been there. I've heard stories that I'm saying that the star changes because of the earth. Um... They just say that it doesn't, but anyway, I thought this picture was pretty interesting. When I looked up Mount Maru and I wanted to see a bunch of pictures, i never seen this one before and I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, and it's got the seven layers, the seven, that's crazy, the seven, wow, that's beautiful picture, man. It says a lot too. But when I have the ripple effect with the drop of water from the center out, it reminds me of this picture. 
Now, I personally think we live on an infinite realm. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. And this is how I think or I know we live. They're just hiding this from us to keep us enslaved, the Lord of the Rings. And this water droplet, it causes the ripple effect. Pretty interesting. When I when I see this, that that's what comes into my mind. Is that picture. You know. And it also reminds me of a vinyl record. With the vibrations of you playing a vinyl record. You know. Maybe... It, it just the vibration we live in a beautiful realm which everything's a vibration a frequency the ripple effect from the center out if you research Mount Maru and the magnetic north also researched a ripple effect. Um, it ties in with the, the center there, the four rivers. It, it reminds me of the cross and Jesus. And we're going to get into the stars real quick. Because they are vibrations that look like they're in water. The original seven wandering stars, which I will show in a second. Including the sun and the moon. The wandering stars, better known as planets, planets, planates, okay? So, NASA gives us these gas balls, but when you open your eyes and you take a look through a beautiful telescope, you see the beautiful creation that the creator put, and you know, and and. The blinders come off and you start to see the beautiful creation in the waters above that were separated from the waters below. Now, I'm not stating that. I always love pictures like this that represent, you know, that show you the waters above and the waters below and how they were separated because then you could better understand how the stars work with the vibration in the water. I mean, when you think of when you think of the vibration in water, and then you look at the stars to a telescope, it all makes sense to you. Just like another thing with this picture, I thought was interesting. You know, and another thing that to add to this picture is we can't get footage. I mean, we can't get cell power in the mountains or, 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 or um, connection, but. They're sending, you know, stuff back from Mars. No problem, right? Footage. But we can't even get a cell phone connection in the mountains. So that's that. I just wanted to touch base very fast on that. You know, because... We all think we're on the spinning ball. I also believe that. No matter what you send up, the horizon rises with you. We're always at sea level or below sea level. Um, you know, in my understanding, the ISS never gets hit by any of this debris. That's another interesting thing. How come the astronauts don't get thumped in the head with a stone? Anyway, the seven original stars, Saturn, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and the Sun, right? Now... It shows the sun, the sun in the center, which I don't agree with that, but I was just showing this to show the original seven. I forgot what shape that is. It's not an octagon. Yeah, it is, I think. Well, the seven planets or stars and the days of the week. And, you know, I've noticed how our days of the week are... Pretty much Greek gods. Just as well as our wandering stars or the planets, right? The luminaries. 
are named by these Greek gods. Now, seven, I wanted to add at the end of this video, plays a big part in a lot. Seven chakras, seven days of the week, seven stars. You can do uh, seven organs. There's a list that I have. How, you know, maybe they don't teach us all this stuff to keep us disconnected. You know, if we knew this and practiced this stuff, um, we could be more connected with, you know, Mother Earth and the Creator and ourselves. But we're not taught a lot of these things. We have to figure this stuff out on our own. And I just try to share some of my information through my research. A lot of truth and stuff from my perspective. The seven days of the week, the seven stars. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. It's, to me... <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry again. It's 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 like so instead of it it's too much to be a coincidence, that's what I want to say. All this stuff is a connection and it's it's beautiful when you start putting all this together, you know, and things start to make sense more. It's interesting. The Sun, the Moon, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Venus, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, seven chakras, um, the seven elements, seven metals, which there's, there's more elements and metals than that, but it's just so beautiful when you start to put everything together in the creation you know, God created whatever you want to call God <clears throat> or our creator. Created all these beautiful creations around us. You know, not just the luminaries or uh, people and the individuals and how beautiful we are from all walks of life. We were created by the creator. And the more I research, the more I want to go hiking, the more I want to go see animals and, and, and see things on this earth because I see the creator more than ever, um, ever since I've opened my eyes and really researched. So if you aren't a flat earther, you should go research some flat earth stuff. Uh, I remember the first time I researched flat earth. I ran into an ODD video down the rabbit hole, and it blew my mind the stuff I was learning. Eric Dubay, Brother Sanchez, Question Everything, um, Dread Runs That Channel. There's so many channels. Thrive and Survive. I always thought it was Thrive and Strive, but. And Donnie from Daytona, beautiful footage. Chief Dancing Bear, all these channels, man, you can learn so much great information from. And I thank all the channels, and I thank you, my subscribers. So please, research deeply on some of the stuff that I brought up. And go outside and look at the luminaries and observe your perspective. Thank you. Peace and love. Until next time. Peace.